Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and this is day 30 of my book Halloween. And all the Halloween map up and all the books I had ever read for this month. Let's get going. So, this is quite a challenge for me just because we have, I had to constantly film and you know just re like pre-record everything so I can get the uploads on time. So. It was quite a challenging task. Will I do it again? Yes, I'm already brainstorming ideas for my next year Halloween. Hopefully it will go smoother. I know it has some, some difficulties as well just because one of them is um, a time limit. Time limit is something I don't I have and I really have. But simply because I'm actually by the time this video is up. I am actually the week of October 18 and to the November 6th. I will be in Europe because of a wedding what my cousin has been doing. So my cousin got engaged recently. So I will be going to a wedding by the time this video is up and all the other before this one. So that's the only um one of the only difficulties I had on the ones, but yeah, so like I had to keep changing some ideas here and there because some of them didn't really work out. Um, but that's okay, and I got it in the end. And so the time limit was really stressing me out. Like I had to constantly film every chance I could get. So and I had to constantly upload and edit. So it was quite stressful. <laughs> but I think next year will we'll go smoother. And I was also waiting for my Halloween decorations as well. So that otherwise I would have started it like right on the 1st of September. So, but I was waiting for these guys which came about middle week of September. But, um, yeah, I'm really glad I did this. I liked it. Um, but should I take a break? Probably. But, uh, I don't know. So yeah, let's just see all the books I have and all that fun stuff. I also didn't really read much of audiobooks, so that was kind of strange. But let's see what I have read so far. So the first book was The Writing Retreat by Julia Barnes, and we have like Alex who just received Once in a Lifetime Opportunity, which is writing an exclusive month-long writing retreat at the Feminist Hallway with Rosa Valor. But then when things are starting to be bizarre, such as Rosa has to, they have to go make a complete novel from scratch during the next month. So they basically have one month to write a novel and they have to write 3,000 words every single day, which is something I cannot even do. So I can imagine all the stress they have. And so, however, something bad happens to one of the writers. They vanish during a snowstorm and Alex it is intimate to find out what is happening in this estate. I gave it three stars. I don't think it was bad. I appreciate the plot twist that was towards the end. I think I thought it was like a really nice plot twist. Um, it was really nice. I kind of liked the pacing. I did like the story how it was taking place. I didn't really find a character that interesting except for Kira. I think she was like the only smart one of this group. All the other ones just acting like immature teenagers and I hate that so much. They were whiny, they were being dramatic. I just couldn't stand none of them except for Kayla. I did like the mystery aspect of it. There was a little bit too much of info dumping just because of the uh, Rosa was trying to be like a ther therapist for all the other characters with the drama. So that was just all in one goal kind of thing so I think there was a little bit too much happening but uh, yeah so I do like the plot twist that's totally why I'm giving it three stars I think the ending is suitable I think it makes sense um so yeah that's it and also for this one uh, I kept asking like there's a certain character named Ian and I've been wondering throughout the book about halfway of the book I kept wondering where he was because he was only mentioned in part one, if you will, of the entire of the eternity of the book. So I don't know what happened to him from the rest of the book. I have my suspicions, but he was just like gone out of nowhere. So that was kind of bizarre. 
My next one is Dead of Winter by Darcy Goats, and we have a tourist group, or it's more of a tour group, uh, where we have Crystal who is joining a tour group deep into the Rocky Mountains, but then something happened and and Krista and her boyfriend Conan got separated and they're stranded in the snowstorm while trying to survive the snowstorm. However, something else happened. The tour guide went missing. And soon Krista finds out that maybe she shouldn't have come here at all. So I, I like the mysteries. I think they gave this a 3.5 stars. Um, I really liked it. I liked how everyone's just trying to come with together. Like, Okay, we need to think of a plan, we need to know what's happening. I did like Simone. I like the plot twist with Simone, so I did enjoy it, but... So I I almost guessed they might kill her, but right at that second, it flipped on me. So I'm like, okay, that works fine. <laughs> so I was half right with the killer, so that made me really happy. <laughs> but, um... I like the mystery, I like the pacing, I like the story of it, uh, I did really like the mystery, I think I mentioned that already, I will stop. Like, yeah, as I said, characters was okay, I did like the whole settings of it, you know, we got the winter, Rocky Mountains, and a stranded campaign in the middle of nowhere, and they have to try to figure out how to stay alive, because there's a killer among them. So, I did appreciate the ending, I thought it was suitable, and... Next one is The Spider House by Johnny Compton. So this was, we have um, a dad who, and of course, was on the run from his serious past with the two daughters, Bess and Stacy. But then he comes across like, like a strange ad for the Madison house. And maybe he got lucky because they needed a place to stay. And the catch with this one was that they need someone to investigate the house. So Eric agreed. But what he didn't buy, but he got more than what he bargained for. So I give it three stars, and I did say if I have to choose between Dead of Winter and the Spider House, I will go with Spider the Dead of Winter. I have read these two in the vlog for day five, so I just enjoy Dead of Winter way more than this one. This one had too much info dumping, too many pops. I couldn't really keep up. I kind of had to go back at the end of the chapters. Just to remember what actually happened. The only character I really like with Eunice, and also um, I don't really understand what happened with Stacy because something happened to her in the past. That's why Eric was running, but I just never really got an ex explanation as to what happened with Stacy. I kind of have missed it. That's on me. But yeah, so I. It sounded really promising, but I'm just sad I didn't really enjoy it as well. So my next book that I have finished was A Study in Germany by Adeline. And I'm following every sale who wants to be a literature college, but they can because people back then have very little mind about women. <laughs> I'm sorry, but not sorry. So she can enter literature because she is a woman, and people have said back that woman's mind is furious and insipid, if you will. But, so then we have Preston who is way ahead of her and he is in literature because he's a man. So then they both come to the manor, but then something's not right with the manor itself. And soon, if we, and soon Preston is determined to, to find out if, to find out if the author of Unhard is a fraud, which is if he's a literary hero. So. Summary is a little bit missed, but I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm still working on my summaries, I'm sorry. But I gave it a 3.5 stars. It wasn't necessarily a bad book, per se, until I found out that it's from Book Talk. I have nothing against Book Talk, but the way they hype books is really... frowned upon, in my case. Like, I don't know, it's just too saturated. And, I don't know. So, obviously I... I have to get away from book talk because it keeps making me not enjoy them as much. But honestly, this book wasn't that bad. Um, as I said in the vlog, I think it would be much better if the characters were more fleshed out. I really could not connect with the characters. They were just too boring, too blonde, and just too flat. I didn't really find any chemistry between them at all. 
Although I did appreciate that Effie didn't really automatically fell in love with Preston, so it wasn't insta love, so kudos to that. I like how the author had built up the romance, but still I cannot find any chemistry at all. Um, but I do love the mystery, the study, the description. Basically, like the whole atmospheric of the book itself, I thought that was really nicely done. Honestly, the final battle with the Fairy King itself, it was really cut uh, too short-lived. Like, it would just finish the one page of the book and that's it. I'm like, what? Really? That's it? <laughs> so I really wish it was dragged out just a bit more and it was just... I wish I had more intense at that part just because it really it was the final battle of the Fairy King and I was just really disappointed with it. So the world building wasn't really there even though the majority of the book took place in the manor. I wish there was some more exploration with the war between the two countries, um, like the Argentinian and Libyan, I think that was it called. But I just felt it was it was like the war was just there just because and honestly I would love to learn more about why they hated each other so much and not just being pointless. But um, honestly, I would love to know more about the sleepers. I think they were a fascinating concept and just something was fully explored in the book. It was just only mentioned and kind of gave like a brief explanation of what it was. but. It really does sound intriguing, so I wish the author could have touched up more on it. Oh uh, yeah, honestly, I didn't really like the ending. I thought it could have been better solved. So, that was also really kind of sad. Mainly, it was a little bit too short for the ending as well. The book itself was fine. I was reading it just like that. And I think they finished it at like 2-3 days at most. So, it was like a really short book. So I think it could have been fleshed out much more, maybe have like 20 chapters, 30 in total maybe at least. Just because I feel like there was just so more stuff in there to be added more and to be explored more. So that was really disappointing that she didn't do that. But yeah, so those are my thoughts on a starting and drowning and I should really get away from book dog, but I don't have TikTok so I don't know once. What's in the book talk community? I only really know because of book teamers and this has been hyped up, but again, I still didn't know this was from book talk. <laughs> but what can you know? So, my next book, I don't know why I keep doing this, <laughs> and that is The Bone Shot Ward, which is the number three book, and it seems like the finale of the Drowning Empire trilogy. <laughs> I read the finale instead of reading The Bone Shot Daughter. I think that was what the first book was called. But I did enjoy it since I gave it a 4 stars and this was an audiobook. Oh jeez, I don't know why I keep doing this. <laughs> but the final name is Sukai who has won her first victory as Emperor. But the future of the Phoenix Empire hangs in the balance and then is dangerously short of allies. As a governor's plot trees in the shardless view of new hostilities. Once still, Lynn discovers her old nemesis Lee Song has joined forces with the monk Alanga and Ragan. Both seek her death. Yet hope slides in history. Legend tells of seven mythic swords forged in centuries past. If Lynn can find them before her enemies, she may yet be able to turn the tide. If she fears the Sukai dynasty, an entire empire will fall. So from what I can understand of this book, because I have the finale, my bad, so, so we, I think Lynn kind of has a grasp of what Empire and that is not too strong. It's a bit slippery even after defeating the army. So I did kind of grew to like Lynn. I thought she was a great character. She knew what she wanted and she went for it, so I really do like that in a character. Honestly, I really like the concept of island sinking because they went through this mind shift. They have to chase someone before, otherwise the island will sink. So I actually really liked the concept of it. I thought it was brilliant, so it was really nice to see something refreshing. I have read something similar about an island. It's not a horror book, but not a fantasy. I forget what it was called, but it was in like a mythology inspired. I just don't know what it was. <laughs> but 
yeah, I thought it was just really creative, that's why I really like that part. I was, I think, obviously because it's a finale, I did feel lost, but that's on me again, so I even, but I still enjoyed it, even though I felt lost. So I wasn't really sure what was quite happening at certain times, but obviously I do need to read the first two books to understand what's happening in the third book. So in the ending, I thought the author did a pretty good job of balancing the bittersweet endings of it, because some authors just want to make it a happy ending, which I don't really like, but I think this author did a really good job of balancing and you know, just between happily ever after and the reality of after fighting for so many years, I thought that was really nicely done. So it was, you know, it was just a full of adventure, love, magic, and battles. I did like Jarvis. Um, his situation was really heartbreaking. And you know, so you constantly see him rise and fall and how he has to conquer it. And in, even though he also has some of his some of his low moments throughout the book. But yeah, I honestly really like the characters in here, so I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the world. I like I like the magic. I like how they had to find the mythic swords. I like the plot twists that were happening. And so honestly I thought it was a like a really great book for the finale. It was a little bit too long for my liking, but I still think it was great because there were actually some chapters where I honestly felt like it was the end but it just kept going and going so I'm like oh there's one but that's my only complaint that was just too long it was just because it just kept dragging but yeah so it was a good finale I mean <laughs> but um that's so yeah obviously I do have to read the first two books but um I really enjoyed the finale, so I think that's great. The last one is The Narrow by Kate Alice Marshall. I gave it a 3 stars. Um, I thought it was okay. I did love the mystery and the concept behind The Narrow itself. But I wish that the author had expanded more of The Narrow just because it really did sound intriguing. So I really wish she touched more on that. Like, I just want to see like where of all of ghosts and all that thing. So. It was really sort of fascinating. Uh, I also really liked the creepy setting. We got the Atwood School, we got the Abigail House. So there was just a lot going on and I really liked the setting of it. I liked the spirit-human interaction and I think the plot could have been better. I kind of wish there was like a, a path, a point of view for the spirit side, I just kind of want to know what they were all thinking when things were happening in the book. I think that was a really, would be a really nice touch. Just because we have been following Eden, who is the main character. And um, yeah, so we have been following her throughout the book, so I really wish we had another side. Even though we did got one more side, but that kind of went towards the end of the book. But um... I wish we got more of signs from that spirit. The friendships seem, seem to be okay so far. They seem to be able to support each other as far as I can see. Um, they, I feel like they can be maybe a little bit toxic sometimes, especially Veronica. She was kind of being annoying, but from what I can see, I, I think the friendship is a little bit okay. Uh, but I only like Delphine and her mystery around herself. So I really did like that part. Uh, I, um, the one thing I know like is how Eden was trying to find re um, reasons behind the abuser. She was going on and on like throughout the book. She was just trying to find reasons, but like, no, sometimes the abuser is just the abuser. So I didn't really like that part, but um, yeah, and as I said before, it was also really basic, nothing wrong, but I just feel like the most generic YA book you could ever read, so, yeah. So those are all my books that I have read. I have wished that I have completed my October TBR, but at the same time, I knew I, was, I wasn't really gonna slightly touch on it, and just because I have other books I wanted to get on for this month, but yeah, I really hope you guys had fun for Bookerine. I am planning more for next year. I'm already thinking 
ideas. But I hope you guys have fun, and I don't really had this as such a fun thing for me to do. But yeah, I really hope you enjoyed it. So please comment, like, and subscribe so you'll be notified every time I post. And I will see you guys tomorrow for my last one. And it's a good one. It's a good vlog. <laughs> so I will see you tomorrow. Bye!